Hey everyone, this is the second video of uh, design pattern in test automation and today we are going to discuss about factory design pattern. So just like we discussed in our first video builder design pattern which was a creational design pattern, this one is also a creational design pattern which means it deals with the object creation. Now when to use it? Uh, whenever there is a requirement where on basis of some input parameter you want to initialize different subclasses so that is the best situation where you need uh, where you need to use a factory design pattern now talking about the difference between both the design patterns which we discussed in our first video and this one so the builder design pattern as discussed earlier in our first video it is best to use it whenever you have a uh, requirement of complex object creations so some object can have maybe just three parameters some object have ten parameters some have just five so those kind of situation uh, it is best to use builder design pattern and factory design pattern as we discussed there is some input parameter on basis of which we need to initialize some subclass so that is the case where we will be using the factory design pattern so now talking about the examples where we can have factory design pattern in test automation. So on front end side, uh, we can have a driver factory because we will be needing the support of uh, different type of browsers within our front end automation framework. And we know that there will be some uh, input parameter, the browser name, which will be coming from command line, right? Then uh, on basis of that, we need to initialize the different type of browsers. So here we can use driver factory. In backend, we have service factory because uh, from our test layer, we will be passing like which, uh, which endpoint of which particular service we want to test, right? And there will be different services that you need to automate. So in that situation, it is best to use service factory. So I have uh, prepared a demo using the backend part and we will be going through that demo in some time. After that, coming to the implementation part. So how to implement the factory design pattern? There are various ways. One of the ways like we will be creating an interface or an abstract class. In my demo, I have created an interface. And then we are going to define the method which we want uh, other subclasses to override. And then we will be creating the subclasses which will be implementing the interface and then overriding the method which is there in the interface. Then we are going to create a factory class which will be responsible to create object of uh, different subclasses that we have. In the end, we will be calling uh, the method of our factory class passing the input parameter that we have which will be used to initialize the object or subclass and then we are going to use that object to call the method with that subclass has overridden to perform whatever actions that we want to perform, right? So this is the whole implementation part and now coming to the demo. So I have already implemented a short demo in IntelliJ for backend automation. So let us go through this. So here we have the same framework that we implemented in our first video. There I had implemented the builder pattern and then we had a test class to use the uh, call the builder methods that we had of different builder classes. And then here I have created a different uh, test class for testing the factory design pattern. And uh, here we have implemented the factory design pattern. As discussed, we have an interface here. These are the subclasses implementing this interface and then uh, here we have a service factory and this is a simple enum for uh, storing different type of uh, services that we need to automate. And last but not the least, we need to have uh, this db.json uh, which we had in our first video but we have the different content here because uh, I needed to implement two services so I have um, modified this JSON. Now it has two different arrays, one for product and the other one is for brand. And now if I go to my server here, JSON server localhost 3000, you will be able to find both of these arrays here, which we have in db.json. 
now if I go to products I have the information for products and if I go to brands I have the information for brand and if I want to go to single then I just need to pass the ID and brands is also having the ID so yeah so each of this we can consider that each service uh, like there is two service brand service and then product service and both of them have uh, we can consider two endpoint one is get all the brands get all the products and then get single brand get single product right now coming to the implementation part here what we have the first thing was to have a interface let me open this part as well here where we define the implementation so we need we created an interface and then we included the method which needs to be overridden by every subclass so in our case when we are talking about services each of the service will have its own endpoints so we know that this is the method which every subclass needs to uh, define their own so this needs to be overridden by every subclass then uh, this is a method which will be same for every subclass because base url of your application is same of course you can define different environments in this method but in our case we are just having the local host and then the second thing was to implement uh, create the subclasses implementing this particular interface and this is the endpoint build endpoint so we will be passing uh, the endpoint name here and endpoint name will look something more readable instead of passing this directly we shall try to pass the readable, readable information like uh, all the brands then a brand and similarly uh, for the product as well a product and all the products something like that products and a product then on basis of uh, this information we are returning uh, the endpoint right this particular endpoint And then the third thing was to create a service factory. So here we have implemented an enum as well, which will be having uh, the name of services that you have in our case as we have product and brand, I have defined it here. And then the factory concepts come into the picture on basis of uh, whatever the input that you have, you want to have the object of uh, different subclasses so if the input coming is product service then you return the object of product service if the input is a brand you return the brand service right and then accordingly next step would be to o to call the overridden method because you in the end your goal is to build the endpoint which you want to test right then coming to the test layer so here our test was supposed to uh, test the single product information so uh, just like our initial uh, setup we have uh, a request specification instance a response instance and then uh, we have a static uh, uh, block here initializing the request specification content type is json and then our first test is to test the single product and here we are calling the service factory get service on basis of uh, we want to test the product so of course we will be using the product service here once we have the instance of the product service uh, we can call the build endpoint with whatever the test we want to perform in case of uh, serenity bdd or cucumber of course you will be passing this this kind of information from the feature files right here i have included it in the test only and then next step is uh, to define the base URL and base URL we know uh, when we will call get base URL it will be calling the default method that we have defined in our interface and then this is the path parameter the ID right we have defined here if we go into the subclasses so here we have defined the path parameter in curly braces so it will automatically be handled and then a request specification dot path parameter we are passing the path parameter and then get and this is the endpoint the endpoint that we have got from here 
right and similarly we have tested the same thing for brand as well and here we will be having brand service the endpoint name we want to fetch a brand only and then the path parameter and then we are just asserting whether the response is okay or not so let me call this method this particular test I have uh, printed the response in console as well just to check whether everything is working fine or not so here we can see we are able to see the information of a single product and our test case has passed similarly if we want to check a single brand Yeah, so here we can see the brand information is being displayed as well. So now we are done with this demo. We have seen that how we can implement the factory design pattern in case of backend automation. And we also discussed the same thing for front end, how we can do the same thing in front end automation. So that's it for this video. We are done with the whole agenda and i will share the notes and the source code github repo link in the description section in case you are liking the content that i'm making please do like share and do subscribe thank you guys see you in the next video